Hello and welcome to McLaren Port Huron Today's Health Program. Today I'm speaking with board certified general surgeon Dr. Zubin Basinia about conditions that cause stomach upset and pain. So to begin we're going to speak about conditions affecting the gallbladder. Dr. Basinia, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Can we first just start about where is the gallbladder and what does it do? <clears throat> sure. So your gallbladder is located in the right upper quadrant of your abdominal cavity, okay? It's right underneath the liver, and its job is to store bile. Now, bile is made by the liver and is used in the digestion of fat. So when you eat, um, food will come into your stomach and then go into the small bowel. A hormone will be released from the small bowel that will make your gallbladder squeeze, and it will empty the gallbladder and then that bile is used for the digestion of fat when you eat. And I think we do have a, a graphic here to kind of show our audience where yeah. exactly it's right. the gallbladder. So the gallbladder is that little green structure that's in the right upper quadrant there. So gallbladder disease is very, very common in our society. Um, it's one of the most common general surgical issues that we deal with. Um, we do a lot of gallbladder surgeries each year because it can become problematic and people can form gallstones. They can have functional issues with the gallbladder where it's not squeezing properly, um, and that can cause problems with indigestion pain as well. Are there other kind of symptoms that people may experience besides like that indigestion that you mentioned? So typically, um, if someone has gallstones, they'll have pain that'll occur after eating. The pain's mainly in the right upper quadrant. It will sometimes radiate right to the back um, and that pain will stay there because the stone is blocking the duct. So until that stone moves and unblocks from the duct, they'll have that pain, and that's called biliary colic. Now another form of pain will occur when people have a functional problem with the gallbladder where it's not squeezing properly. And there's a specialized x-ray test called a HIDA scan that we use to define gallbladder function. And those people that have a, an abnormal ejection fraction where the gallbladder is not squeezing properly will typically have complaints of pain, heartburn, indigestion, nausea, bloating after they eat. And the food that typically triggers that is a greasy meal. So something like a piece of pizza that has dairy fat or grease from the meat on the pizza will irritate them and they'll feel funny after they eat it. Are there um, any kind of populations that are maybe higher risk for having issues with their gallbladder? Well, we used to worry about you know women in their 40s that have had children um, that would you know predispose them to having gallstones because during pregnancy they can form. Um, but it's it's pretty common. We have both men and women of sort of all ages that can be affected by it. At what point do you recommend that people come and see you or see their doctor about issues? So typically when people have had a complaint for a little while, they, they might just think it's indigestion, but it, it sort of reoccurs. And it's important to get checked because if you have a gallstone that blocks the duct, it can lead to some very serious problems. Um, people can become jaundiced. Uh, people can develop pancreatitis where the stone gets blocked further down in the duct. It actually blocks the pancreatic duct and that can cause a very serious inflammation of the pancreas, which will make you very sick. So stones can be a real problem. If the stone stays lodged in the bile duct long enough, it can set up an infection in the gallbladder. It leads to gangrene of the gallbladder, which makes someone very, very sick. And how do you usually uh, diagnose issues with the gallbladder? So typically when someone comes in, and they may come in through the burns room, um, we do blood work. So we can look for signs of infection in the blood work. We can look for abnormal liver function tests. So we look at their bilirubin. There's liver enzymes that we look at to see their, if they're elevated. Um, there's some imaging tests we can do. So ultrasound is very common to look at the gallbladder. We can look for stones. We can look for inflammation around the gallbladder. We can look if, see if the gallbladder wall is thickened. Um, and then we can also use a CAT scan sometimes to evaluate people that have pain that's in the right upper quadrant, but it could be coming from somewhere else to help define things. And then lastly is a nuclear medicine test called a HIDA scan that looks at gallbladder function. And in that test, we're actually putting a marker that's incorporated into the bile, and then we actually see the bile move through the body. So we see the bile in the liver, we see the bile in the bile duct, we see the bile in the gallbladder itself, and then we see the bile going into the small bowel. So if the bile duct is blocked, we can see that on the HIDA scan. Um, and then we can also evaluate the function of the gallbladder, how well it squeezes when we give some hormones to make the gallbladder squeeze. 
And how are uh, gallbladder um, problems usually treated? So typically, uh, fortunately, gallbladder surgery is done as an outpatient nowadays. Um, back, you know, 30 years ago, it was a big deal. You'd be in the hospital four days after gallbladder surgery. There'd be a big scar along the, the right side of the ribs. But today, we do it laparoscopically. Um, typically, there's four little, t you know, quarter-inch incisions, and we're able to remove the gallbladder uh, via this technique. So the operation takes about 30 minutes to do. You spend a couple hours in the recovery room, and then you go home. Uh, most people recover fairly quickly. Uh, the pain typically is not significant where they need a large amount of pain pills. Um, right now, most people get by with you know, one or two days or almost no, no pain pills and just take some Tylenol or Motrin. And so is surgery usually like one of the first things or are there other medications or things that people... So try? unfortunately, um, if you have gallbladder dysfunction or gallstones, uh, there's no medication, there's no exercise, there's really no, you know, dietary measures you can do to control that. So once you have gallbladder disease, the only effective treatment is surgery. Is there anything that people can do to maybe prevent them from having issues with their gallbladder? Um, so, you know, there's uh, some little things. Once they have, start having problems, they can affect, change your diet, where you have a low-fat diet will help not stimulate the gallbladder, so by changing your diet that way. Um, staying hydrated so you don't get dehydrated, so your bile concentration doesn't change. But it's a very common disease. We have very healthy people that develop gallbladder disease, so it's not something you really can't uh, stop from happening. And so the, um, talk a little bit about the procedure, so the actual gallbladder. So the procedure usually is done as an outpatient, and you know, it's pretty well tolerated. The procedure takes about 30 minutes to do. It's done laparoscopically. Um, most of the incisions are five millimeters in size. Uh, there's actually four incisions to, to do the gallbladder surgery. Um, there's one at your belly button area. There's one in the top part, the epigastric portion of the, of the abdominal wall. And then two little small incisions off on the right side. And what we actually do is visualize the gallbladder laparoscopically. We are able to grasp the gallbladder and sort of move it around so we can do the dissection of the gallbladder. And then we're actually clipping a duct, the gallbladder duct, and we're clipping a small vessel that feeds the gallbladder called the cystic artery. And then we're removing the gallbladder from the liver bed um, with a special tool. And then we extract the gallbladder through a very small incision. What does the recovery look like for our patients? So most people will, you know, lay low, take off, off about a week off of work. Um, by that time, they're pretty well back to normal. Yeah. And uh, what, how does the patients like feel afterwards? Is it a big difference for them to not have their gallbladder anymore? I think the ones that are symptomatic feel a lot better afterwards because, um, you know, if you have discomfort after you eat and it happens frequently, they, they become afraid of that. You know, so it's a big change once they have it taken care of. Um, the pain post op is very minimal. Um, usually it feels like they've done sit-ups. It's not like a terrible pain. Um, and that resolves very quickly. Very good. This has been really great information. Thank you so much for speaking with us today. Thank you. And thank you for watching McLaren Port here on today's health program. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to like it and share it on your social channels. You can check out the entire video library at www.mclaren.org forward slash phvideo.